Hello and welcome to the second part uh, of the Road to Talks on dynamic susceptibility. Um, so last time we have been uh, calculating the dynamic susceptibility of a straight pipe and we've seen that it is uh, the ratio of uh, the stresses in the pipe divided by the speed um, of the um, excitation of, of, the, um, of the highest part here. And uh, um, so far we only have we have done it for a straight uh, um, uh, line. Uh, the next step is we have uh, looked at a non-homogeneous line with this open end here. And um, we then realized that the stresses are no longer at the supports or in between two supports field, but uh, here they are actually at the change of the diameter. And um, now um, we need to discuss how we actually calculate the stresses. Because if I look at this node here, it's actually a reducer, um, so I need to include the stress in the intensification factor of the reducer in the calculation of the dynamic susceptibility. And in order to do that, I will use the stress analysis. Now, of course, there is no allowable stress for dynamic susceptibility, and this is one of the issues. But um, first of all, um, let's calculate it, uh, the stresses, including the stress intensification factors. So we'll first of all go to manual stress calculation here, so I can create my e equations manually. Um, and now I will use the um, equation that was created here by default uh, as, if, uh, as an S2 equation, but I would like to include uh, it as an S3 equation, so I get the um, uh, stress intensification factor for fatigue. And because the stresses are so high, I will scale them by a factor of 10, the allowable, so um, the scaling, the color scaling is a little bit more um, yeah, readable. Yeah, and I will do this for both cases here. Secondary case uh, based on the uh, full um, D DS. Okay, um, so let's check what this gives in the stress analysis. And uh, um, of course now um, the um, str original stresses are um, uh, multiplied with the stress intensification factors. And um, so if I look at the nodes now here, I will find stresses um, that include the stress intensification factor here uh, of a factor of 2. So now at this location uh, I have stresses which are around five times higher than the original stresses of my straight line here. So this is um, uh, already a little bit of a concentration uh, compared to uh, the straight line. Let's have a look at um, uh, more complex piping systems. So um, here I have um, brought up a model you may have recognized it is our <laughs> training model again. And in this case, I, again, I've created uh, the eigenvalue shape, the um, dynamic susceptibility uh, uh, calculation. Uh, and let's have a look at the eigenvalues first here. So the eigenvalues uh, here, the first mode shape is at uh, uh, 3.9. Um, if I look at my dynamic susceptibility, I get the um, results for the displacements. I can calculate the equivalent stress and I can see which zones um, have the highest stresses without the stress intensification factors. And um, then of course I can uh, go to uh, the stress equations and uh, look for uh, the stress equations including um, uh, the stress intensification factors and we see again it's, it's this part here that is um, has the highest stresses. Actually I can look at the list and see the highest stresses are here are around 1000 newton per millimeter squared per um, uh, millimeter uh, per meter per second uh, uh, speed. Yeah. So um, um, of course we, we, we don't really have a scale and we don't know if, if this is a, a whole lot. Yeah, it's actually here uh, at the T. So um, le let's compare it to some uh, speed values that um, have been published. We can uh, refer to um, the uh, specification that was given in um, uh, the VDE Merkblatt VDE uh, 3842. Uh, 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 it's a, 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 Merk, um, a, a paper about vibration in piping systems and uh, they have included a table um, uh, which gives allowable um, acceptable vibration speeds uh, when you uh, observe vibration in an existing piping system. So I've, um, I've prepared it a little bit nicer here um, with the color. So you have uh, three levels, design, um, marginal vibrations, still acceptable vibrations and unacceptable vibrations. 
and um, they are scaled on the frequency. So ma maybe for 10 Hertz, uh, a design value would be uh, like 3 uh, um, a millimeter per second uh, and it would be unacceptable to have more than uh, 30 millimeter per second. Now in, if I take the um, value that I have used to excite the, uh, to calculate the dynamic susceptibility I would have uh, 1000 millimeter per second here so this would be highly uh, unacceptable. So it's almost 300 times what would be called a design value. Yeah, um, So that um, would explain why uh, there is no um, the, the stresses are so high there in the in the calculation. I have transferred these graphs um, uh, also into a displacement amplitude over the frequency and we can see that uh, for lower frequency the acceptable displacement ac uh, amplitude increases and for higher frequency it will decrease. And I also plotted it uh, over the acceleration and um, if I look at the acceleration graph this is now even steeper than the uh, velocity uh, graph here and um, we can see that if we look at for example at the 100 hertz um, um, I'm already for, for the uh, lev level of uh, unacceptable uh, on the order of uh, yeah, almost uh, 100 um, meter per second um, a squared here so this would be uh, like 10 G so it's clear that um, uh, above 100 Hertz I don't really have to care about the vibrations here because the um, the acceleration I need to apply to the piping system are so high that uh, this would require um, uh, quite a strong excitation force yeah so usually um, I can limit my my, my dynamic susceptibility analysis to the lower frequencies below 100 Hertz okay so um, let's go back to our row 2 model and um, the next step I would like to do is to, so that we get used a little bit to the values that we may um, find here um, um, I, I will in include a small branch line here which I've prepared and I will just copy it here um, let me um, uh, uh, copy it also here um, right next to it um, and I, I will put it uh, near the node but um, let's say in the y direction minus one meter and you know, like uh, this here so uh, and I will put an anchor point here at, at the uh, foot point yeah and uh, now I will rerun the calculation of um, uh, this piping system to see what the dynamic susceptibility um, uh, is of a system where I have uh, an oscillator on top of another oscillator. So here the main pipe has a frequency of um, 3.9 Hertz. That was what we done uh, measured right before we started using this, um, uh, adding the small branch. And um, if I look at the eigenvalues now, I can see that the um, uh, the smaller part here is around uh, yeah, three Hertz. So it's pretty close. Yeah. And uh, now uh, let's look at the dynamic susceptibility here. So the stress is due to the dynamic susceptibility um, are very much concentrated here at the, um, um, at the bottom part of the uh, T and the, uh, there's actually 4000 Newton per millimeter uh, squared per um, millimeter per second. So here I'm um, now, now almost a hundred times higher than the straight pipe. Yeah? So um, that's quite uh, starts to be quite significant. And um, this is um, actually what we we try to avoid. Yeah, um, we try to find locations where there is a high stress concentration uh, if there is vibration, and this will happen at all locations where we have uh, um, um, a, a, um, a basic uh, resonance uh, frequency which is um, a coincident with the frequency of a connected branch. So the small a piece is basically excited twice it's excited excited by the underlying piping system exactly at the frequency which is unfavorable now um, uh, we could try to uh, improve this for example by m uh, changing now um, the frequency of uh, the branch so um, um, uh, first of all I, um, I, I will change the branch here um, to make it longer yeah see what it does if I increase the branch length and check this one and now I can see that um, the 
uh, stresses have come down from 4000 to 2400 because now the frequency of the branch is no longer the same as that of the run. I can also do it in the other direction. I can change this length to let's say 300, make it shorter and uh, run the calculation again. And so um, let's have uh, a look at this situation. Now the stresses are down to 2200 again. So I can either make it longer or make it shorter but it should not be the same resonance frequency of the branch as in the run. Yeah. Now um, if I increase, uh, if I decrease it even further, let's reduce it to uh, 200 now and check what it does. Yeah. And now we see the stresses are back up again at 4000. How is that possible? Yeah. So uh, let's go to our uh, dynamic susceptibility load case and let's have a look at the um, displacement here at the end of the beam and uh, uh, maybe show all the eigenvalues and because I'm too lazy to look through all the eigenvalues I will put a diagram of the speeds here and just display the speed graph and um, I, I suddenly see that it's no longer my initial eigenfrequency at 3 Hz that is important. Now we are in resonance with a higher eigenform which is um, actually moving in the y direction. Yeah? So this was a, be a mode shape around uh, 20 um, something Hz. Yeah? So let's try to find this, this mode shape here in the eigenvalue shape so this would be probably this one. So basically what's happening now is we have found a resonance uh, between uh, the horizontal movement of the pipe in the y direction and this small branch. Yeah? So it is important that the resonance frequency of those small branches is not uh, the same as the one of the underlying piping system and in, uh, in neither direction. Yeah? So the dynamic susceptibility, even though we don't do not know anything about the excitation, so this high dynamic susceptibility in uh, most cases will not be a problem at all. But uh, if we have vibrations, there is a potential that there is a high stress at this branch because of a resonance and uh, it's quite easy to avoid if we know that it exists. Therefore it could be a, um, a good idea uh, for systems where we are afraid of um, vibration problems to do this check about dynamic susceptibility um, in this way. So let's have a look at a more complicated system. This is a complex piping system um, with many many lines and it is uh, very difficult to identify if there is any ob objects that could be uh, yeah, um, could crawl create problems with vibrations. I also do not have any information about the um, yeah, excitation in this piping system, about uh, pump frequencies. I know that there are some pumps but there is no specification about rotation, uh, um, number of turns per minute or whatever. So I've done exactly the same um, approach. I've calculated the eigenvalues, uh, I've calculated the dynamic susceptibility and I've calculated the stress equation here. And uh, now I can check the stresses that appear and can directly go to the worst locations. Yeah? So I can see that there is a branch here which is potentially uh, highly susceptible to vibrations. I've got uh, the same thing on the other side so this is maybe not a very good idea. And there is another one over here um, where I also have an open branch. Yeah? So um, even though the, the system is very complex I don't have a um, um, I have uh, any information about excitation. I can use the dynamic susceptibility here to uh, to concentrate on those zones where the resonance of some branches is in uh, um, in concordance with the underlying piping system. And maybe just by changing a little bit the length of one of the the, th the systems, I can easily avoid this uh, concentration and reduce them by a factor of two or even more, so that if ever there is any uh, vibration uh, excitation in the, uh, the environment in which I built the system, or I if the process is such that there is a internal excitation, maybe due, the f due to fluid, um, uh, this uh, dynamic susceptibility can be ha can help to reduce the risk that um, I have trouble in. Um, uh, I I when I run the plant. Yeah? Okay, uh, thanks for today and uh, see you in the next time.